Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. I'm here to help. Good. An Italian restaurant on the brink of disaster. We busted our ass all day and lost money. We should have been stayed in bed. Run by a family that is being torn apart. If this place fails, I don't even know if we'll be together anymore. There's a stubborn father who is impossible to please. This thing is awful, Sam. I feel that like sometimes you hate me. A son who is unable to step up. Why can't you show me the same fire I had and just go up there and try it? And a mother who is caught in the middle. You gotta get out of here. Fuck! God damn it! You don't have to be back there. I'm tired of playing referee. I don't want to be everyone's mom. They've got everything on the line. We're losing our houses, we're losing our life, we're losing our everything. And Gordon Ramsay is their last hope. I thought I had a job to do, but now it's just become ten times fucking bigger. Get ready for an intense... I've been wanting you to notice me since I was 13. Emotional. Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. I just want my family to be healthy and happy. Very special. I never stopped loving you. Kitchen Nightmares. north of Detroit lies the township of Macomb County, home to Giuseppe's. Its owners, Joe Borgia and his wife, Kathy, have owned several successful Italian restaurants in the span of 25 years. After retiring, they decided to open Giuseppe's with the dream of passing it down to their son, Sam. I opened it with the expectations that we would put Sam on his feet and Joe and I could just go to Florida or wherever, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Sam basically said, Dad, I'm going to step up to the plate. I'm going to work day and night. You and Mom can come a little bit at a time. But when they started working 20 hours a week, to me, it was like uh, another empty promise. You want to go get your son? Because every time we, I try to explain, he's got to walk away. Sam, did you walk off the line? No. It's a nightmare for two reasons, the lack of customers and the hell that goes on in the kitchen. You're Pretty serving good. frozen fucking salmon. I mean, no it's matter not, what you do, you can boil it in grease. No, no, it's still no, going to be no, fucking no, I prove okay. you wrong. You prove me wrong then. I'm not supposed to have no input. I'm not supposed to be able to change anything. Usually people roast them on the barbecue. No, that's the way you do it. I'm just supposed to basically be a shadow and somebody that he can just say it's your fault. OK, Dan, whatever you say. I'm Brian. I'm a truck driver, but I chef here part time. Right here, Joe. I've known Joe for forever. He's getting up there a little bit in years, and he's just he's getting tired. And I don't think that his son is stepping up to the plate. You don't have to be back there. I'm not. They just are pushing me too many hours. They're not pushing you. You're pushing you. I'm a diabetic. Some days I don't feel like coming in. Some days I can't even roll out of bed. But I have to be here. That's my responsibility. My sugar is low. I'm fucked up. Here. I got, it. I got it. My dad's health is not good by any standards. And it's the most heartbreaking thing to see. I just want my family to be healthy and happy. Everything else doesn't matter. If anybody can help our family, it would probably be Chef Ramsey. I'm here to work with a family in a restaurant that's in crisis. The kitchen's run by father and son, and they're constantly at each other's throat. The mother's torn between them both. She's actually here to pick me up. Wow, he's got a smile. That's, got, that's a good sign. I was excited and nervous, but I knew once he was here, everything was going to be fine. Nice to see you, my darling. Ah. And thank you so much for coming to pick me up. Now, the restaurant's run by Joe. Your husband. My husband, Joe Giuseppe. And Joe's the head chef, and Sam's the sous chef. Exactly. Is Sam taking over from Joe, or...? Well, that was the plan, but yeah. it's not happening. And I'm sure Sam's a little disappointed. Well, he's 28. He must be ready for it now, surely. He's about the maturity of about a 23-year-old. Right. He's not ready. And the Russians only been open for two years? Yeah. And I'm in debt big time. I got my house in foreclosure. I owe about $150,000 outside of that. Outside the I house? I don't mind losing a house if I can sleep anywhere. But the business, that's everything I have. And at my age, I can't start over again. How does um, Joe feel about this? He's miserable inside. Damn. If this place fails, I don't even know if we'll be together anymore. And this is it? This is it. This is my little play. Hope you brought your magic wand. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome.
I think Chef Ramsay may be overwhelmed this time. It's not just as simple as a menu change or firing somebody. I think it's a little more complex. And I think this is where you'll be. Okay, great. That Palomino sauce, Sam. I know you don't want to listen to me. Did I do exactly you, how you, you say You put way too much white wine on it, and that's why you're getting the burn in. told me to put the white wine. With Joe overseeing the kitchen, Sam will be cooking a menu designed by his father for Chef Ramsay. I think Chef Ramsay is going to come in here, order a few things, and he's going to say they're horrible. Welcome to Giuseppe's tutorial. Please allow my family and I to introduce you to the essence of Italy. Mm -hmm. The old world family recipes and cozy atmosphere. Mm. This place has only been open for two years. It looks like something from the 1970s. Hello. Hi, how are I'm you? I'm John. Nice John, to meet nice you. Nice to see you. And you're one of the servers, obviously. I am one of the servers. Excellent. What would you recommend, my darling? I would recommend the eggplant rollantini. That's our house specialty. OK, great. And um, I'll start off with the potato skins and the octopus salad. OK. And I'll keep hold of the menu, because I'm, okay. uh, I'm going to read on. OK. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Essence of Italy, my ass. What do we got? We need octopus salad, yeah. potato skins. OK. That's first, and I'll guide you through. When I saw Chef Ramsay order octopus salad, every part of me wanted to say, we're out of it. Can you please take the salad out of the window, please? But how would that look? Mm, wow. Octopus salad. That was quick. Good. Thank you, my darling. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. The octopus is like rubber. Excuse me. Jesus Christ. It's like a mouthful of hubba bubba. It should be done in a frying pan very slowly. Like, I got it, I got it, Dad. Let me get this. Potato skin? Mm. Is that normally that chewy, that octopus? I think it is. I've heard people say that before. Would you be my guest? Just decide. I'll be your guest. Please, my darling. Very tough. Huh? Mm hmm When I tasted it, I'm like, oh my gosh, we serve this shit. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what it was. That's what it tasted like. Horrible. Octopus is chewy. Horrible. And how are the potato skins? The cheese is um, hideous. Not good? Yeah, would you like to try one? No, I don't. No. <laughs> I've had enough. How are we doing, guys? Octopus is shit. It says it's chewy. These are hideous, too. Cheese is disgusting. Oh, boy. I always brag about how good my food is and how good my restaurant is. And if they don't step up to the plate, I am going to cook every individual dinner in this restaurant. Put it in my grill for a little yeah. bit. Eggplant Rollantini. Thanks, son. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I think it's too much wine. I mean, that's my personal You think it's too much wine? I, you know, I... If Make a new one. I can't really identify any flavors because it's just absolutely piping hot. Almost like it's been nuked in the microwave for three minutes. I can cook every dish that he had, and I guarantee you he's going to love every one of them. What the hell's going on in there? And why aren't you back here? Well, because maybe they should try you out and see you know, what's going on. Honestly, sounds like there's a war going on. It's incredible. Uh, never this many fucking complaints yeah. in two fucking years. Relax. Relax my ass. God damn it. Two fucking ears. Coming up. Family's one thing, we're in the business. Family tensions boil over. I want to be the best chef, but I want you to be my father, too. Joe deals with his deteriorating health. Can't do it anymore, man. What the shit? Sugar is low, I'm fucked up. Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. You know, I've been without insurance since we opened this restaurant. Can Gordon bring this family together? Is Sam a good chef? He's, he, he likes to cook. Or is this restaurant... Don't overcook it. It's well done, Sam. It looks like shit. ...and family. Why can't you show me the set of balls? Beyond repair. I've been fucking doing that shit since I was 13. Nice to you. You don't see me? See what, Sam? You don't see me? After sensing Gordon's disappointment with lunch, the family regroups in the kitchen. We got to stop being the mother, the husband, the son. Family is one thing, we are in the business. Yeah, you're and right. And if you think that it's that responsibility to be the chef, you better be the goddamn best fucking chef on this side of Mississippi. I right? want to be the best chef okay. on this side of it's We're in Michigan. Yeah. But I want you to be my father, too. You know, I just want to grab my dad and 
give him a hug and say, look, it's going to be all right. You just got to trust in me a little bit. Now it's time for Joe, Sam, and sous chef Brian to hear the cold, hard truth from Chef Ramsay. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to meet you. You sat on the back of the menu. Step into Giuseppe's, and I'm going to take you through a romantic, authentic restaurant in Italy. I like the passion, but the palate's fucked. That eggplant, bland, milky, spongy, and then piping hot in the middle like it had been blasted in the microwave. It and just, was. It was? Yeah. So you don't bake them fresh? No. Chef, we got probably 3,000 responses that we did this questionnaire. And we didn't get one negative thing about the food. So where the fuck are they then? I don't know. You don't need questionnaires. They don't ring you up and say, by the way, I'm not coming back. They just don't come back. They vote with their feet. Why are we serving potato skins? Do I want to come to an authentic Italian restaurant with potato skins? Absolutely not. A lot of people come here with their kids, and their kids don't want uh... Hey, I've lived in Italy. I've seen the Italian families, the way they eat together. They don't serve fucking children in Italy potato skins with plastic cheese, I can assure you. There's no fucking reason to have potato skins on an Italian menu. Joe, I'm not asking for excuses. I'm here to help. Yeah. But everything I'm saying, all you're doing is firing me bullshit excuses. Don't bullshit me, and I won't bullshit you. Do you understand? Yes. I got told in the car of oh, the pressures facing this place. But I can see why we're in this shit. The food's crap, guys. I thought I had a job to do, but now it's just become 10 times fucking bigger. Yes, sir. I'll see you later on this afternoon. Get some Great rest. Chef. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, chef. Giuseppe may have been born in Italy, but he's certainly not delivering Italian authentic cuisine here in Michigan. He may say it on the back of the menu, but he's not delivering it in flavor. That's for sure. Before Gordon can formulate his plan to turn around the restaurant, he wants to see a dinner service and the staff in action. How are you today? Good, how are you? Hi, how are you? My name is Carol. Is that come off that? <laughs> Looks like a cockatoo. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Three? Yeah. Not a problem. Hi, how are you? Is everything OK here so far? Good. You ready, honey? Oh, yeah. I would like to add canned meat sauce. Meat sauce? Thank you, dear. Thank you. I don't know, baby, and here we go. What's up there, uh, Brian? It's going to be an uh, order of roast potato. How can there be roast potatoes in the microwave? That's the program here. So what Giuseppe wants. Has he lost his fucking marbles? And my dad feels like he just needs to push the food out real fast, you know? He wants to melt cheese in the microwave. But you can't take shortcuts like that. It's horrible, you know? Food comes out quick. Is that normal? Really quick. Too yeah. quick, I think. And what would you like? I'll have the uh, ravioli florentine. Thank you. Sometimes salads, their soups, and then their main entree comes all at once. I would like the uh, gnocchi. You guys want to do the wings as well? Enjoy, OK? I always call it fast food Italian. Fast food Italian, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong there. The sauce is warm, but the inside is. It needs to be warmed up. OK, honey. Hey, Brian, can you please warm this for me? Yep. More crap. Don't want it, don't want a review. That was a ravioli with Alfredo. The pillows are hard. Why well, we have so much problem with that? I, I, I don't get it. Brian, yes. the inside's a little bit on the cool side. OK. Can I put it in the microwave? Unbelievable. Two things I can definitely confirm. The first thing is they're fast. Unfortunately, too fast for their own good. The second thing is when they're fast, they're sloppy. Over 12 dishes have come back, and this place is about to explode. Unbelievable. Is everything OK tonight? Um, I don't know if I like this too much. Do you want something else? It's a little bit too lemony. I'll be right back. Excuse me, I'm going to have a reorder here a little too lemony. Maybe we should take the one goddamn <laughs> recipe. And Maybe we should. Put your ingredients on. A little bit of olive oil. What, just straight olive oil, or you want? Like a caramel mix. Did you put your salt, pepper, and garlic in here? Yes. Garlic throw, I got it. I was trying to ask you what you wanted well, add. If I say calamari mix, you should know what I mean. I didn't hear calamari mix. That's what I said. To see my father not trust me was just getting downright frustrating. I don't know what else to show my father. This is supposed to be black, and it wasn't black, and that's all fat. You need a new steak? What did they say? I need an O. Did you want another steak? 
Yeah. OK, medium rare, blackened. Sammy, you know what blackened means? Dad, I put it on a flat top. I put a Cajun seasoning on it. I put it on there, and I cook both sides medium rare, blackened. Is that what blackened is? I do need another steak. Medium rare, blackened. OK, I get Very it. black and very I spicy. It. I get it. Whatever. Yeah. Where's the Cajun spice? I got it over here. Sam is like a new puppy that you have to constantly pay attention to him. This is a joke. He's not ready to run the business. Why don't we ever add towels in this line? There's a towel right there. I won't even wipe my there's ass towels, with it. There's towels right there. There's towel down here. Joe did not like. What the hell? How's that steak on that redo? You want me to cook it? It doesn't come out of my ass, OK? All right. I hope it doesn't come out of your ass. Don't touch your steak. What the hell? Sam, get your ass out of there. Let's try to make him happy. Joe, did not like? After multiple dishes are returned, Joe kicks Sam out of the kitchen. OK, Sam, get your ass out of there. And takes matters into his own hands. You want to make somebody happy, and that somebody happens to be your father. You want to make him proud of you. You want to make him believe in you. But I don't know how to do that after 28 years. And I'm still trying. Now I'm really seriously starting to understand what it's like behind the scenes in the kitchen. You've got Brian there and Sam cooking fine, but too fast for their own good. All of a sudden, Joe walks in, marks his orders, and then disappears. But when he walks in, they all stand to attention, and he talks them like dirt. Unfortunately, that dirt's his son, Sam. Right. That was tough. We've got ourselves in a real horrible rut cooking in that kitchen because it's just slamming food. I've never seen so much food go in a microwave in all my life. It's like no one's striving to be better. You tell me how you feel about the frozen food. I hate it. I'm embarrassed to say it's my food. Why don't you tell Dad that you want to cook fresh? Dad, I want to cook fresh. I want to cook fresh. Is Sam a good chef? He's, he, he likes to cook. I don't want my children insulted, whether it's true or not. It cuts me. And only a mother would understand that. And what's his weaknesses? You're not committed. You put 25 hours a week. I used to work that my, when I had my first restaurant one day. Why haven't you been committed? My father doesn't really talk to me that much. And you know, I, I feel that you, sometimes you hate me. No, I, I don't, don't want to be I don't talk to you. to you because you don't put enough time here to get involved. Where's your fire in your belly? I mean, why can't you show me the same set of balls that I had and just go up there and try to make something out of it? I've been fucking doing that shit since I was fucking 13. Nice to you. You don't see me? You don't see me? See what, Sam? I've been scrubbing floors nice to you. I've been wanting you to fucking notice me for how long. I don't How, how many floors? times you looked at me and said, hey, holy fucking shit, good job. Not once. They just won't tell me about that you're bullshit. Long, you're not here long enough to do that, Sam. I'm not long enough for you to say good fucking job one time? Come on. I don't, I don't know what else to say. No matter what, there's always a complaint. I have not served him anything without him saying it's not done right. It, it hurts. I mean, still, to this day, I'm almost 30 years old, and that stupid shit hurts. We've got our cards out on the table. Now I want to see the passion. I want to see that little bit of flame relit. The light's back on. OK. In the morning, Gordon wants to focus his attention on Joe. Before the customers come in, let's have two minutes together. Not his battles with his son, but his battle with a crippling disease. How does it affect you, that level of diabetes? Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. I got pain in my legs every day. And you have a, a proper medical insurance? No, I don't. Oh, come on. I don't. OK, we can afford it. I had to cut it off. You know, I've been without insurance for, you know, since we opened this restaurant. God's sake. 
you know? Rest is the first thing you need. You can't be here seven yeah. days a week. I built this restaurant. I've been putting in 70 hours a week. I would like my son to run this restaurant and me kick back. But Sam doesn't follow through, and now I'm stuck with this thing on my shoulder, and I am keep on digging until I dig myself out. You can't be a fucking martyr. I know. Hey, you've got to look after yourself. You know? You keep me posted on how you feel. Yeah. OK? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Before Gordon can turn around Giuseppe's... I want to turn up a notch. He needs to test Sam's abilities... I want to cook off. ...and reignite Joe's passion. Both of you, cook something unique, anything you want. The front of the house staff, I'm going to taste. They won't know who's cooked what, but what they will know is which dish is the best, because that dish tonight is going on as a special. Ready? Let's go. When Chef Ramsay said that we were going to have the cook-off, I kind of just wanted to do something simple but bold and hopefully impress Chef Ramsay and impress my father on top of it. Everything hand-bought, freshly made pasta, fresh lasagna, fresh salmon, asparagus, double pork chops, garlic, basil. Blow me away. OK. I saw the salmon just caught out of the water maybe two hours ago. I had to go for the salmon. I love it. I used to take center cup pork chop, and I sear some scallops with some pancetta, with some uh, Italian sausage and provolone cheese. OK, let's go. OK. Right, two dishes. First one's a broiled salmon with asparagus coated in egg, finished with provolone cheese, and the salmon has been charbroiled. Next to that, we've got a pork chop stuffed, served on the side with grilled potatoes and gratinated with provolone cheese. Take a taste and then pass it down, yeah? I was confident in my dish because I always cook with a little flair and a little flavor to it. OK. We're going to start with, uh, Mum. Out of both dishes, which one would you choose as a special? I would take the pork chop, put it with the potatoes, not the pasta, with the asparagus. Mm -hmm. So a bit of both. That's a fair answer. Diplomat. OK, Brian, out of both dishes, which one would you choose? The uh, pork chop. Pork chop. Yes. Right, darling, which one would you choose? Definitely the pork chop and the mushrooms. OK, feed it to the pork chop. Tony. Out of both dishes, which one would you choose? Um, I would have to say the salmon. Mm -hmm. Salmon? Yes, sir. OK, Dawn. If I was just looking at the menu and hadn't tasted them, I would probably go with the salmon. But after tasting it, I'd go with the pork chop. Right. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. Huh? Sure, I was a little disappointed, I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I want him to be better than me because I need someone to look up to. I need a mentor in my life. My choice, out of both those dishes, they're both good enough to go on this menu tonight. Yes? That's what's going to happen. Two specials. Congratulations. You're the man. Good dish. I wish he would have won, to tell you the truth. You know, which is dish looked really good. Tonight, you're going to be cooking your father's special. Make sure you know the dish inside out. You got it. I'm real fired up, not only because we're putting a new item out there that everybody's going to taste, but me and my father are going to work together on each other's dishes, and I know they're going to be excellent. With everyone feeling good about tonight's specials, Gordon begins to work on another problem of this restaurant's, the lack of communication between Joe, Sam, and Kathy. I'm here to help. But it's, you know, it's it, every hour it's changing because I've never, ever quite come across such a difficult a restaurant change. situation in all my life. Because the restaurant's one thing, but the biggest problem is the family. And what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter and say in that letter what you really want to say to them both. Write that letter for me. I will. Please. I will. And don't show any of them it. I won't. My objective tonight is to push the specials. You've got one made by the father and one from the up-and-coming son. I want to make sure that you sell them. With Joe momentarily out of the kitchen, Gordon sees a chance to speak with Sam. Uh, we'll just give you two minutes, to, uh, Drew. Yeah. Tonight, when you get out of here, when you get home, I want you to tell me in a letter to your father, yeah, what you really feel about him. What kind of figure that guy is in your life. Yeah. I want you to put it on paper for me discreetly, and I mean discreetly. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. 
Oh, fast customers ahead, yeah? Here we go, yeah? Booth over here, okay? We're gonna put the pork. Okay. And the scallop on top. Right. Um, I am going to try the salmon. Okay. Gee, it's happy special. It's happy special as well. Thank you. Okay, here we go. You're gonna be expediting in and out, and you're on the line, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good, good man. So it's gonna be two pork Giuseppe. Okay, two pork Giuseppe's. All right, let's show them what we're made of. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Very nice. What a breath of fresh air. Every dish like that, yes? Yes, sir. Salmon, enjoy your meal. Two salmon, two pork. You got it. Mm, I really like the pork chop. Don't overcook it, Sam. It's just boom, boom, get done. Once again, Joe can't give up control of the kitchen. It's well done, Sam. Instead of expediting and making sure orders are filled quickly, He's at the stove cooking Sam's dishes. It took 25 minutes for a calamari. Joe, are you expediting? No, not really. I can't read without my glasses. Your glasses around your neck. Fuck. This is his heart. This is his place. But he's got to learn that he can't always be in the middle of the action. I can't do it anymore, man. What's wrong, brother? Oh, shit. He's going to kill himself. The sugar is low, or I'm fucked up. Joe, expedite and let Sam cook. Jesus Christ. Want to switch? I'll, I'll dress him up. Well, right? I can see, man. I got I to the fucking things back in on I got them. Oh. Chef Ramsey wanted Joe to expedite, but that's Italian in him. Never let go, never give up, never surrender. Help me pull him off. Right. Because that's the only way. I mean, literally, we got to pull him off. Right. I had to get him off that stove. He's magnetized that. Is that a steak? It's well done. I don't like that steak. I don't like it. It's well done, Sam. It looks like shit. Sam. Yeah. Kick him off that. I'm sorry, dude. But your fucking sugar's up. You got to get off. Thank you. With Joe finally off the line. If that kid, we don't let him stand and fail a few times, he's never going to stand up. Sam and Brian regained control of the kitchen. Look at that, my friend. There you go, Sammy. And finished the service. Very well, good. And while the staff was cleaning up. Two seconds. Gordon cornered Joe. Is it your wish that one day Sam takes over? Yeah. I want you to go home and just write a short letter how you feel about him, what he means to you, and what you want him to be one day. I want you to talk from the heart, and you've got to keep it between you and I. I will. I will. Even though the specials were a big success, this restaurant still has a long way to go before it's ready for relaunch. Tonight wasn't good enough for this restaurant. If we're going to establish any form of longevity, I know we can all do better. Tomorrow, we are going to do better. We're going to relaunch and market this place. So you get yourself off to bed. Yeah? So you're going to work for a change? I mean, you're going to. <laughs> you're such a Rottweiler. I swear to God. OK, good night. Immediately after the family and staff left, Chef Ramsay's team went into high gear, working through the night to transform Giuseppe's into a contemporary Italian eatery. What a beautiful morning for a relaunch. How are we? Good. When I first arrived, the restaurant was dated, and it's almost like you'd opened a dated restaurant. This is what you call a modern contemporary Italian. Are you ready to see the new Giuseppe's? Yeah. Yes. Yes? Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come through. Woohoo! Look at this. Holy. Oh, Isn't it beautiful? Huh? <laughs> it was claustrophobic. Now, it's a modern, contemporary Italian restaurant. I just couldn't believe that something like this could be done in the, it just the time that I slept. I'm totally taken back by this. It's like a different place. New bar stools, new drapes. Wow. Nice new chairs. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. He's holding Sammy. Oh. He's just born. When I saw my father look at the pictures of me and him when I was a little boy, you know, when I saw a tear come to his eyes, I almost lost it. You feel like you're stepping inside something historic. Now it's modern, I love it, I yes? Love it. I love it. Run by a, an amazing family, Joe. I just, I, I don't know how you do stuff like that. You deserve it, my man. Come here, you. Huh? <laughs> and you just doing it. Huh? Is it lovely? It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Huh? I'm so happy because now we have a real chance. It's a new beginning. This is beautiful. <laughs> something even more important now. Marketing. In order to relaunch this restaurant, we're going to host the first ever Giuseppe's Bolathon with the American Diabetes Association. Yes? I'm overwhelmed. 
you know, bullet down for diabetes, which uh, lost my brother and my mom. So it's, it's, it's a big thing. Bullet for diabetes. It took your brother, it took your mother. It's not taking my it's father. It's not taking you. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for being part of our first ever Giuseppe's Bowlathon. Yeah! We were greeted by a warm crowd cheering for us like we were some celebrities. You guys hungry? There you go. It was great to see my father passing out soups and talking to the customers and getting them all excited about our restaurant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have no words for this, but. I'm glad that you guys are here and uh, help spread the word about diabetes. We're going to fight it. And with help of you people, we're going to do it. After the success of the first ever Giuseppe's Bowlathon, Chef Ramsay and the staff return to the restaurant to prepare for the relaunch. The condensed menu. It's fresher, it's quicker, it's smaller, and more importantly, it's 10 times more exciting. The classic soups, pasta violi, Minestrone soup, that's the heartbeat of the restaurant. OK, the chicken, parmesan, look at that. It's a new way, modern and something complete. When Chef Ramsay presented our new menu, and I saw that all the old bullshit was off, I was excited. We're at 2008 now, and here's the menu to prove it. More importantly, if this restaurant's got a chance of survival, we've got to communicate and stick together tonight. Right now, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm 18 years old again. <laughs> One, two, three, Giuseppe! Coming up... Yeah, it's not going to be you on the line. Oh. Can Gordon finally bring this father and son together? Yeah, I only want you to be proud of me. Or will the staff <laughs> tear them apart? Come on, guys, concentrate. Hey, 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 hey. This thing is awful, Sam. And make dinner service a huge disappointment. I want to leave. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. What a fucking idiot. You don't want to miss what's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has assigned Sam to run the line and Joe to expedite. We've been given every opportunity. Now it's time for me to step up to the plate and knock it out of the park. Hello. Welcome to the new Giuseppe's Trectoria. Hey. Are you ready to order? Better cheese and caponara. Feel more sauce. Seafood platter, wonderful. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is a very, very important night. It's not just about the relaunch of Giuseppe's. It's a transition. That's what's got to take place tonight. Will Sam step up to the mark? And can Joe let go and give Sam the confidence to run this place? Time will tell. All right, I got three Marcellas coming right now. I need them, baby. Only 30 minutes into service. Medium wall is coming right after. And stubborn Joe is on the line cooking again. Yeah, do you want to get off the line? We got it. I got three Marcellas coming on the fly. I need them, Sammy. Dad, get off the line. Go. Oh. Marcella, coming hard. Get it. It's not going to be you on the line, you understand? My father wasn't letting go. He doesn't need to be back there right in the action. If anything, he's making things more complicated. Priority, chicken Marcella. What's wrong? It's wrong. Oh, fuck it. No. Sam. Yes. Not now, buddy. I've got pink chicken. OK. Come Sorry on. about that. Come on, come on. Slow it down. I'd rather wait an extra five minutes and send out fucking pink chicken. Yes, sir. Take your time. I'm having a problem with the lasagna, the ricotta is actually cold. Okay. Hey, you guys. Yes, ma'am. They need this cooked more. All right. They yes, said it's cold. Yes, ma'am. Don't rush it. We're not rushing. Yeah, we are. We're going right back. This grill sucks. Dan, do you want to get off the line? This thing is awful, Sam. Dan, that char roller, I've made the best things in the world off of it. I was, again, seeing the same thing. My dad getting worn out. Getting angry. Yeah, go. We got it. If we can't handle it, then we shouldn't be here. And it was really starting to get to me. Joe. Joe, two seconds. Yeah. They have to learn to do it without me. Yeah? Take 10 minutes out, get All some right. fresh air. Please. Hey, they're fine. Get out. Please. They have to learn. All right, I got this shit cracking. I just got to get a few more working, OK, please? Do it, man. Come on. Send it, man. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Get out. Fucking hell. If I was rich, you sure the hell wouldn't be here. Well, I'd still be here. There. 
Steve, we got time around this bread? Sit down. I've got the bread. Fucking hell, that guy's unbelievable. Unbelievable. This guy is incredible. He had to leave the line, he's down and out, and he's beat. So they've got to step up to the mark, and it's now or never for those guys. They've got to do it for Joe, the restaurant, and more importantly, for themselves. Come on. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. That table was here half an hour after us. Enjoy. And we still haven't received our food yet. Honey, it's coming. How are we doing this, Emmy? Coming, man. Can, coming. I, can, can I plate this? Plate it. Plate it. I'm plating it. I'm not playing. I'm plating it. OK, great. You want a goddamn award? I heard all the noise in the kitchen. I mean, it's a zoo back there. If they're screwing around, it's hard to run a smooth ship. I do apologize for the delay. OK, we got a seafood platter. There you go, dear. Please enjoy your food. Hey, yeah, quality up here. Where's the quality? Right, right here. here. Yes. Quality's there. Thank you. Unfortunately, Brian's goofing off is causing Sam to lose his focus. You want quality? I got you quality, huh? <laughs> and the customers are feeling the effects. It's I apologize. Can you please reorder this for me? What's the matter with this? The inside and the cool side. Come on. OK. Brian, Sam, come here a minute. From behind the line, it sounds like we're fucking around. Food's coming back raw. All I want you to do is cut the fucking around and just concentrate a little bit. Because if you concentrate, shit won't come back raw. We waited an hour for our food. Now I'm sitting here 20 minutes waiting for raw fish. Just quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Come on, guys. I know we can do better. You fucking here we can do better. Well, come on, then. Just concentrate. Yes, chef. Screw that fucking shit. It's stone cold and raw. You know whose fault all this is tonight? It's his. The people are done eating, and she hasn't got her dinner. And I haven't right. even gotten my food yet. I want to leave. All right. All right. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. It's not difficult, so it's stop not... making fucking pathetic excuses. Here we got Chef Ramsay giving us a hand, and now you're going to turn around and basically spit in his face and say, it's your fault that I suck? That's horrible. I feel sorry for the man. Honey, it's coming. We don't even want it. Yeah. Hold on. It's okay. You just got to slow down and stop being a fucking goofball throwing food out there. Okay, great. Thanks. Nothing complicated. Outstanding. Good man. Good man. B6 is ready to walk. We got a table walking. Let's go, guys. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Excuses? I ain't got no excuses. You just said you blame me. We did. On the shit I ate when I first arrived. That's cool. Thanks, Chef. Huh? What a fucking idiot. Supposed to be in this together, right? I would never come back here again. Fucking cement mixer. This guy's a pain in the ass. Where's Brian? <laughs> in this hugely important dinner service. I got three Marcellas coming on a fly. I need them, Sammy. Dishes started to come back. Sam, yes. I've got pink chicken. Pull it together, come on. I want to leave. And when Chef Ramsay tried to restore order. Quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Brian couldn't handle the criticism. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Thanks, Chef. And packed it in. It's supposed to be in this together, right? What a fucking idiot. This guy's a pain in the ass leaving a father and son to rely on each other to save this restaurant. Come on, I'm not giving up. I'm not fucking giving up. All right, Sam. Real Marsala, is it out? Real Marsala is coming right now. OK, I'll take care of the sauce. OK, I got shrimp scampi coming on a fly. Uh, salmon, right after? You got it. We got this, all right? I couldn't have asked for any better. Father and son finishing off, yes? Yes, chef. I'm so happy to know that me and my father can work side by side without trying to kill each other. I mean, it's a great feeling. That's what I always wanted. Excellent. Hey, what a difference. They look great. Beautiful. Steven is delicious. Yeah, you have to try this. It is so delicious. good. Delicious. I like that a lot. I yeah, you did an excellent job today, Sam. I'm proud of us. You know what I mean? I think over home, my son did really, really good. He pulled through, so that shows me a lot. He made me realize that family, it's everything. And that's what we have with each other. This place is going to work, Pop. After an incredibly successful relaunch, the only thing left for Gordon to repair is the family. We have come a long way. From the first minute I walked in here, I saw a family that wasn't even talking to each other. They were talking over each other. And nothing was sinking in. I asked all of you individually to write a letter. And before I go, I want you to read the letter. Kathy. To Joe and Sam, 
I see that our lives and the way we exist and treat each other is not acceptable any longer. We need real change before it's too late. Joe, I don't want to be a widow. Please try to trust in Sam. You need to teach and support him. You need to let him make mistakes. You need to pull back. Sam, my beautiful son, it's time to fucking stand up. You know this has always been for you and about you and your new life. Don't be scared. It's time for you to shine and start busting some ass. Love, Ma and Kathy. Well done, my darling. That was tough. Sam, you're not out of the woods. I thought maybe we didn't have time. <laughs> yeah, well. Dear Dad, this letter is coming straight from the heart. I have always looked up to you. Dad, I really, truly only want you to be proud of me. It feels like I am a big disappointment to you because of my past immaturities. I really am sorry if I disappointed you, and even more sorry if I hurt you. I love you, Dad. All I want is to take this restaurant over and let you relax. We is all we have, and without each other, we are nothing. Love your son, Sam. Amazing. And now, the man. The reason why we're all here. Take your time. To Sam. I, Sam, I am writing this few words to let you know that this last couple of days, you made me realize how important you are to me. And I came to realize that you are ready. I want you to take charge. Finally, I am really proud to have a son like you. P.S. I never stop loving you. And I'll be there for you no matter what happens. Love you, Dad. You're an amazing family. You've just forgotten it. This is the closest I felt to my husband and my son in a really long time. For my father saying that he loves me and he's proud of me and he wants me to take over, it's everything I always wanted. It's my dream come true. Chef Ramsey brought back the love that we had that we almost lost. And I'll never forget that. You are the American dream. Good night. Good night. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. You can't create jack shit from here. Chef Ramsay goes head to head with Long Island's most arrogant chef. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. There will be no faults in what I produce. Whose business is clearly dying. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. No happy hour here. Is he sleeping over there? Just an early bird special. I feel like I'm in Florida. His girlfriend not only supports him. Fire 14. Her parents have put their life savings into the restaurant as well. Put my home, my retirement, and everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> but this guy doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. Oh, my God. How can you expect food if you cook it in this shit hole? It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Can Gordon get through to him? I wish you got your ass kicked in a fucking kitchen. You should be ashamed. He can bust my balls, but the name on the awning is it's not Ramsey. Before he not only bankrupts himself. You sank half a million dollars into this shit? But his girlfriend's family as well. We're screwed. We should have never did this. One thing's for sure. There's a shocking conclusion that will change this family forever. I am out of it. I don't know what to do. I'm going to fucking knock somebody out. Great Neck, New York is an upscale community on the north shore of Long Island, where competition among Italian restaurants is fierce. Trobiano's has been struggling to survive for the past three years. Owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend's parents, they are now just months away from losing everything. 
My desire to own a restaurant basically started right after culinary school, uh, working for other people. Look at that, huh? And then I said to myself, why am I busting my ass for everybody when I could be doing it for myself? Hey, Joe, put a steak knife on there. Man, then he came to me one day and says, this place is available, you want to buy it? I don't know if it took balls or I was just plain stupid doing it. They go right over me and ask him. Having a business together, you know, you see too much, you're together too much, there's resentment because of it. Appetizers, they See go back out or in no? one minute. Tiff? I, I, I heard you. Me and Anthony have been together for six years. We used to never fight, ever. I thought he was like the best person in the world. And then we got here, I'm like, who am I going out with? I want a whole new fucking slip. We should have two. When it comes down to running the business, it's really Anthony that runs it. Hey, change the fucking ticket, bro. Come on. Fucking kid. It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Fire 14. At the beginning, Chorbianos took off. We didn't maintain the food coming out fast enough with quality. And from there, our business decreased. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. The early bird special was my idea. Any place you like. It's bringing in people to keep the boat afloat. How are we doing, folks? Everything all right? Forget about it. I feel like I'm in Florida. It's crazy. I'm working, killing myself to pay bills. I don't want to live like this. I don't. I don't really want to live this way anymore. It's depressing. I put my parents into this position. They were finally getting comfortable, and now they have no choice but to work, or they're going to lose everything. Anthony. He's only my daughter's boyfriend. I put my faith, I put my home, my retirement, my wife's well-being, everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it is my name on the awning. To think that my name is going down as well as the restaurant, that would definitely be disappointing. You guys have to run more food, okay? We are. More. The last three years have been rough. By this time in my life, I thought we would've been married, had kids already. If we don't get Chef Ramsay's help, there's no other options for us. OK, here we are. Oh, shit, it's for sale. No, that's an early bird dinner menu. $14.95. Fuck me, it's cheaper than the sub shop. Right, Trobianos. Here we are. Hello. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Gordon, please. First name is? Joe. Joe, good to see you. Continue. Very nice to meet you, Chef Likewise, Ramsay. good to Pat. see you too. Nice Pat, nice to, to see you. When Chef Ramsay came through that door, I thought it was a blessing. I think hopefully he'll put us straight. So, uh, who came up with the bright idea of opening a restaurant? You bought a restaurant with your future father-in-law. It was just an exciting thing, you know? You're able to purchase a restaurant as a dream of mine. How old are you now? 28? 29? Mm -hmm. So you were 25 when you opened it? Mm -hmm. Which is fucking young to open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Felt that was ready. Ambitious, you know? And have you trained in Italian restaurants? No. I have not. I felt I knew everything. I still do. Are you that arrogant? Possibly. I wouldn't open a fucking Italian restaurant without working in one. I definitely think Anthony needs to hear that he's arrogant because I say it to him sometimes and he takes it as, oh, yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gobsmacked that a young man at the age of 25 would manipulate his future father-in-law to open an Italian restaurant having never worked in a fucking Italian restaurant. That doesn't make sense. No offense, I didn't pin him down and handcuff him and said, you, I need your house to put the restaurant. But you've got the house now. Chef Ramsay was, you know, making me feel like it's my fault that the restaurant ain't doing too well. I might have enough pressure as it is. You guys are struggling to get married, and you've been married for a long time. You know, that level of pressure, how do you manage that? It's been rough because we can't do what we want to do anymore. We just can't do it. Tiffany? I hate it here. He'll get mad at me that I'm saying this, but I do. I don't like it here. It's not that I don't like working. I like you, honestly. It's just hard yep. sometimes. Having Anthony and my parents as partners tends to be difficult. Anthony says one thing and then my parents say another, and, you know, sometimes they clash. Whose idea was put that pathetic sign in the window? Me. Uh, bringing some sort of customers in, right? Yeah. It seems everyone's in agreement with, you know, the light-hearted decisions made by one individual. What Chef Ramsay had to say to Anthony was on the point. Sitting back and just listening, you say to yourself, wow, what the hell are we doing? Why did we do this? I'll be back in now. Chef Ramsay feels one way and I feel another. And at the end of the day, the name on the awning is Trobianos. It's not Ramsay. Trobianos has unfortunately become known for one thing and one thing only. 
its inexpensive early bird special. How are we doing out? Beautiful. The restaurant is only minutes away from its nightly ritual. Hello, how are you? Were you early? Of course. <laughs> Put you right by the window. Oh my goodness gracious. One thing all the family agree on is that the food is great. And Anthony, well, he's certainly a confident guy. Now, I may be in for a treat. And right now, it's time for the early bird. Here we go. This is, this is busy. Yes. Huh? Got there early, aren't they? 4.30. 4.30. Who eats there early, right? Wow. The decor matches the clientele. Drab, fuddy-duddy, yeah, and seriously old-fashioned. I feel like I've come to see my granny in a retirement home. I can't eat dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. You enjoy your dinner? Well, I'm sure. So what would you recommend? The Trobiano salad is excellent. Uh -huh. It's chopped. Why would you chop it? People seem to love it. Is that because of their teeth? Maybe. <laughs> It must be a nightmare. Knife, fork, there spoon, and straw. Right. <laughs> I can't stand here. <laughs> Still need a few minutes? I know. I think I'm ready. All right. What would Excellent. you like? Uh, first thing, eggplant tower. OK. Then I'll have the chicken wrapped shrimp, please. Finally, some fish. What would you recommend? The salmon's fresh. It comes with potatoes and vegetables or pasta, any pasta you like. But you wouldn't serve spaghetti with the salmon? Yeah, people get it all the time, because they like to take the pasta home, usually. <laughs> Let's go for the salmon and spaghetti bolognese. OK. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Two for one. What up? You got it. Is he sleeping over there? Is he? Shit. Here we go, right here. Table 10's appetizers, please. All right. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. I feel that there will be no faults in what I produce for him. There you go. Wow. The eggplant tower? Oh my god. <laughs> when Chef Ramsay's appetizer was coming out, you could see his face like, what is this shit? I said, oh my god, we're dead. That's definitely not homemade mozzarella. It's ghastly, stone cold, solid, and tasteless. How are you, madam? How was dinner? Fair. Fair. And what have you got in the bag? What is that? Eggplant parmesan cheese. Oh, lovely. When will you have this? For lunch tomorrow? Yeah. So you're not coming back tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Because you've got dinner there. <laughs> Rock hard I like mozzarella. your British accent. Thank you. <laughs> I like your lipstick. <laughs> it's great spending time in the company of the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, bring it out. Wow. Chicken wrap shrimp. Okay. Thank you. Chicken and shrimp. Well, I've got the chicken. And where's the shrimp? Bingo. I'm struggling with that. Looks like chicken, tastes like shrimp. Or oh, shit. Judd. They are solid. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. OK. You ready? Jesus. Oh, uh, yes, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Your shrimp was too hard. Rock hard, like a bullet. OK. He says, why would you put shrimp inside of a chicken. He says, I don't get it. All right? When the first dish came back, I was, I, I was disgusted, pissed off. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him my cooking skills, you know, are up to par. Somebody please run this fucking food. That's the bolognese. Thank you. Ooh, and there's the like salmon. Thank you. OK. Christ almighty. and dry and absolutely hideous. Pretty silent, dry, but like really dry. OK. Would you mind just... Um, Not a problem. Would you like another piece? Uh, no, 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 no. OK. Thank you. Your salmon was too dry. He don't want another piece. He said this was brutal. Here you go. You want to taste it? Throw it out. When it came back, I was just too pissed off to even taste it. I was furious at Chef Ramsay saying that my food is shit. Personally, I feel that it's the wrong opinion at this point. I'm fucking furious. I'm furious.
Coming up, Chef Ramsay tries everything to get through to Anthony. Give me something, please. But he quickly finds out that Anthony feels he's too important to clean. You're telling me now that you don't clean. That's what we have staff for, right? Too confident to taste. Anthony, look at me. Taste. I just didn't want to taste it myself. And too stubborn to see that the relationships around him are on shaky ground. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it, but you have to. This arrogant chef may be the one that pushes Chef Ramsay over the edge. Oh, shit. I am out of there. And out the door. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. It's only 7 p.m. Early bird customers have now left, and at a time when restaurants are usually bustling, Trobiano's is empty. All is quiet, except it's time for the family to hear from Gordon. Let's have a chat uh, together, yeah? One thing that was absolutely amazed me this evening is the size of the portions. When you serve an entree, you're serving a second entree with it. It's been confirmed to why we don't open for lunch, because you're serving the lunch the night before. So they're robbing you. However, that's not the biggest problem. The food, hideous. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. What, what, what's going on there with that? The eggplant tower? What was wrong with it? That's not fresh mozzarella. I'm really sorry. That's processed commercial crap. <laughs> Salmon, did you see it when it went back to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Yeah. Just because you may have the inclination that I'm acting like a dick, it was dry. I don't think you're acting like a dick. I just didn't want to taste it myself. It's hard to hear him get yelled at, but Chef Ramsay, he knows what he's talking about, so he should listen to him. Every time a plate comes back to my kitchen, I taste it. And then the worst dish, the shrimp and the chicken. Where'd you go looking for the shrimp? Just seems unique. Now I'm even more concerned about what you're tasting. I thought you had a better palate than the fucking customers in there this evening. It was hideous. He can bust my balls about my ego, but you should not be killing me over my food. I know I'm a great chef. I don't think he knew what he was talking about. OK, I'm out of here. It's been a tough day for everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. 14.95. That's not easy, that, slapping a family in the face, especially when they're half a million dollars in debt. And it's tough. I honestly don't know if I can turn this around. Oh, dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. We're so frustrated, we're so worn out, we're so yeah. beat up. We don't know what the fucking direction we're going anymore. Well, obviously, we have to find the right direction because well, we're drowning well, very quickly. Maybe this was a godsend that he came here. Do you know what? There's no way I can sleep. I've got to get back to the restaurant and actually find out what this guy's kitchen's like. What's he working with before I start putting my plan together? As Gordon ventures into the kitchen, the family continues their post-dinner meeting. You need to take criticism better. I'm going to take criticism better. You're like, oh, these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You don't want to hear it. Right, you don't want to hear it, but you have to, though. Like, you got to take it and be like, maybe I am doing something wrong. This is shocking. When was the last time this was clean inside? My goodness me. Look at that. The floor is caked with grime. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. When was the last time this was clean? Bloody hell. Oh. What on earth is that? Oh, the smell. You know what you do wrong? Just take more, take control. more control of these guys, and I feel that you don't. If you want me to take the control, don't go second guess me about anything that I do. Behind, behind there? Oh my god. Shit. Look at that there. That is mouse or rat droppings. Oh my god. A couple of hours ago, I was feeling slightly embarrassed for them, slightly concerned in a big way. But now, when a chef let go of his kitchen like this, it proves he doesn't care. I want to be more involved in the business end of things. Forget the business aspect. Well, and your portion is the hosting portion. Hi there. Yeah. 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 Gordon. I was going back to the hotel. Couldn't sleep. Had a look in the kitchen, and I am absolutely fucking. 
job plans. How can you do that? And when that is? Say that again. What is that? What is that? Come here. Anthony, how can you cook in this? When was the last time this was cleaned? The kitchen? Well, we try to do it on a daily basis, I mean. What? Have you seen under there? Underneath? Underneath here. Joseph, would you mind having a look? I don't think you've actually seen this. Down there. I see it. Look at that. Oh, God. Please, Anthony, talk to me. Give me some form of feedback. Don't bullshit me. Give me something, please. Well, they're asked to do it every day, the staff. They're what? They're asked to do it every day. We're on our ass with half a million dollars debt, and you're telling me now that you don't even clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Oh, my God. What's this, then? What's that on there? The droppings. They're not fucking caraway seeds. I wasn't unaware of that. I couldn't imagine it was been that bad. From the surface, everything looks nice and nice. When you start digging, I can't, just can't believe it. Isn't this your bedrock? Isn't this where it's all created from? You can't create jack shit from here. I swear to God, I don't think you give a fuck. You should be absolutely ashamed. Chef Ramsey came in like a bat out of hell and again, just whipped the living crap out of me. There's only so much you, you could do or say. So why, Anthony? Give me something, please. Oh, my goodness, you're lovely. Come up with an answer, Anthony. Although I'm fucking out of here. I swear to God, I am fucking out of here. I can't take much more of this shit. Fuck it. You got no chance. I am out of here. I am out of there. Anthony's arrogance and his refusal to take responsibility for his kitchen have pushed Gordon to his breaking point. I am out of there. When Gordon Ramsay walked out, I said, that was it. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. I don't know what to do. Ramsay, you don't even want to help us. When I saw Chef Ramsay going out to the street, I was feeling a failure. I had to tell him how I felt and just not let this slip through our fingers. What the fuck's going on? Where do we stand? I want to get this place back. Why have you given up then? Tell me. There must be a reason. Because on the ambulance in there, you gave up years ago. Anthony, that's your family in there, right? And each and every one of them believe in you. Yeah. Don't you feel bad? Honestly? Don't you wake up for sleepless nights? Yeah, I do. I do. Have you ever had that burden on your shoulders? Somebody's house? Not quite to this extent, no. I've been in the industry for 21 fucking years busting my balls. I've made mistakes, yeah? I've had failures. But fuck me, have but I learned from to... it? Exactly. I'm trying to learn from it. Are you? Yes, I am. By that in there? Come on. Fucking, come on. Fucking, huh? I think you've had it too easy. You want lucky fucking boys to get hold of this restaurant at 25. And I don't see that fucking level of humbleness. Slightly arrogant, fine. But a little bit of humility. You know that. Are you able to move forward? Yeah. Chef Ramsay taught me you need to face reality. You need to realize that maybe you're not the only one involved in everything. Time to get humble and turn the corner. Let's go. We've just had a chat, and now we're going to clean. When that place is clean and you see the difference, you will respect it from a completely different level. Not just the kitchen, the ingredients. If that's not working, what chance have we got? Let's do it together. Oh, fuck. Let's go. When I seen Gordon Ramsay come back in, I said, oh, OK, there's still a little ray of hope. 
Declutter everything. We get rid of all the food first, yeah? We're going to give this place a really good clean. At this point, I'll do anything and everything that Chef Ramsay does suggest. He's definitely a, a shot of reality. He's kind of just snapping me back into place. After a stressful night, Gordon chooses an unlikely spot to introduce the family to the first of many changes. What, are we going to slaughter our own beef? <laughs> <laughs> this is one idea, OK, in order to separate your restaurant from any other Italian restaurant anywhere near Great Neck. What do we get from cows? Make Every the milk, the butter, yeah. cheese. What do we do with milk and cheese? What do we make? Mozzarella, uh, no? Mozzarella, exactly. Uh, exactly that. Who's milked a cow before? No one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss Glamorous Pat. <laughs> gloves off, please. Gucci gloves off. Look at those gloves. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you could have prepared me a little for this. Oh, my God. Nice and gentle now, yeah? Make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> ah, yeah! Ah, it's going on! Just try and keep it in the bucket, but... <laughs> this was so out there to milk your own cow. I feel like you really say something, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited here. I never thought I'd see my wife milk a cow. She's over there playing with the others going, uh, uh, uh. Come on, Tiffany, put both hands, please. Nothing's coming out. Oh, that's Tiffany. I'll just squeeze it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, my God, look at this. I can't believe I'm milking a cow. Oh, you've done that before. No, I just, I watch a lot of westerns. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anthony, put some muscle into it. This is running away. You're not blaming somebody else again, are you? Come on, you're the chef. <laughs> well done. OK, on the back of last night's scenario, just bringing you four together and having some fun was great because it looked like a family. Last night, everyone was in their own little turmoil, so today was really what we needed. This now needs to be pasteurized. We'll take it back and we'll start making our first ever fresh homemade mozzarella. Ready? Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teats no, are not your strong point, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Back at the restaurant, Gordon walks them through the process of making fresh mozzarella. Anthony, push all the way out so it gets really nice and shiny. Perfect. There you go, look. That's it. You've got it. I didn't know how to make fresh mozzarella. <laughs> we actually had a nice little learning experience. 45 minutes a day. Chef Ramsay's idea to make fresh mozzarella here is definitely putting a stamp on Trobianos. It's something that people are going to remember. People are going to come for. With a number of bookings for Friday night, Gordon decides it's an opportune time to implement another one of his changes. OK, tonight, take down that sign. <laughs> the early bird's finished. You don't need it. You're running a restaurant, not a retirement home. Let's go. Now that the early bird menu is a thing of the past, Gordon introduces pasta and mozzarella specials to the dinner service. OK, spaghetti lobster. I don't want it flooded with a heavy coating of tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah and over here, homemade fresh mozzarella, yes, with caramelized red onions, escarole, bang. Beautiful. All right, two nice specials, yeah? OK, good. Hello, ladies. Going into dinner service, I'm real nervous. I got this buzz going on. We got a lot of things on the line here. So you want a mozzarella special? Yeah, you, you can bring them out with the appetizers here. Yeah. Thank you. Two more specials. Taste, 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 yeah? Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking sauce or a breadcrumb. You taste, yes? We're looking good, looking good, looking good. Come on. Mozzarella is fresh. They actually milk the cow themselves. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's delicious. delicious. Mike, spinach ravioli, lots of ravioli. Eliminating our early bird special is a lot more difficult. We have a lot more dishes to prepare for. I need the lobster special. We need to hurry up. Please. Let's go. Come on, go, 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 go. Anthony, look at me. Taste. You fucking taste. Yes, chef. I got to watch you. Yeah. I'm probably going to make a big sign. I think Anthony needs it, saying you have to taste the food before it goes out, or I'll kick his ass. OK, we're coming, we're coming. Here we go, here we go. Go. Mike, we got a side of linguine, garlic, and oil coming up. Nine and 10, right after another. It's busy. This guy's getting absolutely slammed. But he can move, huh? He's definitely got talent. But there's one thing this guy hasn't done is taste a thing. From a chef's point of view, how can you serve food out to the customers and not taste anything? Unacceptable. 
beyond fucking belief. Now I'm locked out. While Anthony might not be tasting his food, the customers are. I mean, it's all right, you know, it's all right. And they're not impressed. It's all overcooked. Yes. Special stuff. Right, yeah, it's dry. It seems like it's been around, not made fresh. Another, another fettuccine? Yes, please. He wants to look at the menu, so get him two menus. Anthony, yes. table 17, they're complaining yes. about their food, saying it's this is too dry. There's two more gentlemen said the same thing, so they're going to look at something else. You got to fucking kidding me. Anthony, you got to taste this food. Come on. Now, we're playing games here. We're in the business over here. We're getting killed right now. Falling behind big time. It's an hour into dinner service, and a kitchen that is not used to being busy is starting to crumble. All right, it's 25 minutes away. By the time we go, I don't have to go to bed tonight. <laughs> Where's my potatoes? Oh, hey, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Anthony was definitely getting his ass kicked tonight. Please get it out. Come on. The food was taking too long. People were scrambling because they were trying to rush. Go, 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 go. Hurry up. Oh, fuck. Something's burning. Fire. Oh, my God. That's not good. Joe. Anthony. Oh, fuck no. With the kitchen already running behind, Michael's burnt entree has brought the dinner service to a grinding halt. Anthony! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God, man. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Jesus Christ. We'll regroup here, we'll regroup, okay? On a night filled with more setbacks than successes, Anthony is trying to salvage the evening by pleasing the remaining customers. It's like nothing. I'm ashamed of uh, myself, and I didn't think it was as bad as the clientele found it to be. You know, could be, I guess, blinders that I was wearing. You're not fucking pissed I am. They think tonight was a disaster. You know, it's depressing. And I know we have to change things, I just don't know what to do. Oh, oh my God. Can I have seltzer, please, with the wine? What's the matter? Can you please leave me alone? Please, I'm, I'm begging you to leave me alone. Tiffany and I's relationship has been rocky. The stress that we've been through over the past three years has definitely proved to be the breaking point. If the restaurant were to fail, maybe we don't move on. Maybe that's the end of our road. My God. OK. Tonight didn't go by without its problems. Anthony, from the first plate that left your kitchen to the last plate, you didn't taste a fucking thing. You can't be that fucking arrogant. It was a travesty. That is your fucking job. And the minute you don't do that, don't call yourself a chef. I never really tasted things beforehand. Never thought it was necessary. I guess that just comes with the cocky and the arrogance of me. You have got to taste. If you're not tasting it, what are the customers experiencing? You know, Anthony should be tasting his food. He should know why the clientele is complaining. It's just hurting my business, and it's hurting my family. Samora, we have to be different, Anthony. It separates you from being average to something quite special. If you thought tonight was busy, whew, hey, God help you, because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. I know it's late. Get some sleep. A big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good night. I feel like it can't get any worse than it is now. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for everybody. In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Trobiano's stodgy interior. Good morning. Good morning. Right, big day today. Relaunch yes. day. A lot of changes. You didn't like this place when I first arrived. Yeah? You didn't like the decor, didn't like the lighting, and it was bland. Are you ready for a change? Yes. Let's go. Come through. Oh, Come through. My God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh my God, holy shit! It's warm, yes. I couldn't believe what I seen. I was definitely in the wrong place. I was dreaming. Everything was unbelievable. The chairs, the, the table forts, the boots. I mean, everywhere you look was beautiful. Oh, look at this! Oh. That's Italy on there, yes? Oh. You're running an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna have some authentic Italian pictures on the wall. 
I used to hate this place. I used to hate coming in here, but now with the new decor, everything just goes really well together. So everything is just perfect. It's romantic, it's warm, and more importantly, it's sexy. This is great. <laughs> Look at this! That is a mozzarella bar. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you happy? Happy is good word. Good man, good man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm happy. I'm like crying. Oh, no, 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 no. I just can't believe it. I can't. It's more than I've ever, ever expected. It's beautiful. It's a total fresh start. You know, we're, we're going to take from today and just keep moving forward. OK, good. The menu, absolutely crucial. We've condensed it, and it's simple and rustic. Oh, oh my gosh. God. OK, no more salmon and bolognese sauce. It's authentic. Portions have been trimmed and they're sensible portions. He showed us the menu. Wow. It was downsized. The prices were better. It's beautiful. It's all in place now. Tonight is where it's got to work. I'm a little nervous for Anthony. This is where he has to show what he's made of, so hopefully he can get that done. Coming up, with relaunch upon them, Trobianos is finally put to the test. The editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. They want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. Can Anthony and the staff rise to the occasion? The most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Or will they crack under the pressure? What's the matter? This is cold in the middle. Uh, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking soul comes back. And at the end of service, a shocking surprise that will change this family for years to come. I was shocked. I never expected this in a million years. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone are the shrimp and the chicken and the dried out salmon. In their place, authentic Italian dishes. The sole, spicy roasted potatoes, rosemary garlic, salmon, the ribeye steak, and the lamb ragu. Homemade mozzarella. We've got hundreds of balls of fresh mozzarella. Right, have a taste. Mm. Wow, this is good. Taste is salad, Joe. That's good, yeah. Oh my God, everything is so delicious. Okay, guys, it is gonna be a very important night and it is absolutely crucial we stay together on it. Uh, one more thing. I had a phone call from the editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, they want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. I'm very nervous about tonight. You know, when he just told us about the critic coming, that scares the hell out of me. This is a real chance to put this place on the map. Just under six million people read that magazine per month. Tonight, I have to make sure Anthony stays on the right track with his cooking, with his tasting of the food. Everything is on the line. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. How are you? Good, good. Hi, how are you? I'm Joe. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, it looks nice. It looks just like a Manhattan to I want to take I just wanted to tell you we're trying something new. We have a mozzarella bar. Here we go. Let's go. So they got one each. So six slices there, six slices on there. Excellent. See, bang. Yeah, 30 seconds, $80. Right. Off you go. Gotcha. There's one for you and one for you. What? This, is, this is delicious, though. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, for four. Can't believe how well this has gone. This is unbelievable. It's extraordinary. I'm going to fill up on the appetizer. Right, right. <laughs> right down yeah, follow him behind with Chicken two. parm, you got one ragu coming up. You tasting the food? Please tell me you taste it. Taste the fucking stuff, man. It's very important to keep the standards high. We have to impress a lot of people. We got a lot of things on the line here. No, I want to make sure they're tasting the shit. I got to watch them now. With Trobianos busier than it has been in years, the pressure is now on Anthony to keep up with the orders. But his staff must come through for him as well. Four. Kevin, table four. I have no idea what that is, bro. Well, yeah, with vegetables, sorry. Danny, I have two 16s. Does not make sense, buddy. What's going on here? The wait staff here is killing me. Anthony, if you can't read the fucking thing, give it back to him, yeah? Yes. Here, take them, rewrite it right here. Quick, Kevin. Got to get these tickets sorted, otherwise you're going to get fucked in 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. While Anthony gets the staff in line. Are they finished with it? So is it fired right away? I need to know. Joe scans the dining room looking for the Bon Appetit table. Any sign of Bon Appetit yet? Oh, oh, yeah, good. Eyes open, yeah? Tony, yes, start pushing out these entrees now, yeah? Yes, you're on top of it now. Just stay on top of it, yeah? How we doing, baby? Done? Yeah, that's good. All right, enjoy. Oh. Wow. Now, why can't I make fish like this? Please watch that. Yeah, potential, yeah? Potential critic, yes? 
This and this, very nice. Go, 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 go. Yes, sweetie. Is it really? I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. Excuse me? Yes, what's the matter? This what's is wrong? cold in the middle. What table is that? Ten. Table off. 10. Oh, shit. Hey, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking soul comes back. When the dish came back, the only thing that was running through my head was whether it was the Bon Appetit table. The traditional stuff is very good. Yeah, yeah. chicken parmesan, very good. We want all the pastas, the pork chops, lamb, to give everybody a little taste. You wanted one of each? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. How do you know it's them? Uh, they ordered everything on the menu. And they're asking questions. They're asking questions, they're ordering a lot of wine. That is definitely a food critic. Anthony, table nine is six people. Yes. One of them, I think, is the critic. Step it up, yeah? Yes. Bounce back, come on. Let's go. OK, we're going to do table nine, a very, very, very important table. All right, here we go. Three minutes on the pasta, Tony. Looking good, looking good. Anthony, yeah, what's that risotto, yes? Yes, chef, yes. Hey, the most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Table nine, risotto and ragu. I need your second bus boy, please, quickly. Nine, please. Wow. Yeah. Everything's on the line tonight, and if we don't make it, then, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. That looks lovely. It's the relaunch dinner, and Tiffany has just delivered entrees to the editor-in-chief of Bon Appetit. Now all the family can do is hope. I'm very nervous about the critics. I really do think that my business is at stake tonight. It's either going to make us or break us. I have a taste of the fish, Victoria. The fish and the chicken are really winners. Thank you. And it's not overcooked. No, it was nicely cooked. And... It's good. Asking lots of questions, and more importantly, they're passing food round, which is a great sign. Yep. Not happy with it, you don't pass it. How is the bag? You like it? Yeah. Very good, right? Yes. Yeah. That was a nice recommendation. Good, yeah. thank you. Any complaints? No, no complaints at all. It's great that they're here, you know that. Huh? It's fantastic. It's amazing. No, it's a dream. Fly. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. I was at an all time high with Bon Appetit, knowing that if this positive review comes out, that it's going to put Trobianos above and beyond where we ever imagined. With a wealth of satisfied customers and a good response from Bon Appetit, Trobiano's relaunch is a success. But Chef Ramsay knew that Anthony still had some unfinished business. The restaurant's on his way. Tonight proved that. But there's one more thing. Look at this. <sighs> beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Make an honest woman of her. <sighs> Shaken. This is unbelievable. This is coming from you? Yeah. To us? You've forgotten about it. And if there's one thing that's missing, it's that. And I know, personally, how long you've been putting it off because of the pressure from the restaurant. That is going to put an end to it, OK? Yeah, speechless. Thank you. Get up there. Stand strong. Tiffany's a great girl. She's put up with me for the past three years. There was no better time than tonight to go ahead with this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chef patron, Anthony Tomriano. I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you can see we've come a long way thanks to uh, Chef Ramsay here. And we've moved in such a positive direction that there's just one thing in my life that, that hasn't been official. Tiffany? shocked that Anthony proposed to me in front of everybody. It was just incredible. I never expected this in a million years. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> it totally touched me to see Anthony propose to Tiffany, and I know this is what he's wanted. It's just unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You better make my daughter happy. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll fucking kick your ass. I have one more surprise for both of you. I've arranged for both of you to get married tonight. <laughs> We 
just totally shocked. With all the excitement of everything else going on, to top it off with a wedding? Come on. I thought I was gonna die. Right? <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. I love Anthony. I've been waiting for this for six years. We have a new life to start, so everything should just fall into place now. Tiffany and Anthony have come together to proclaim their undying love through the celebration of their marriage. I am filled with so many emotions. It was an amazing night. Son-in-law. It's unbelievable. There's no other word to describe all of this, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this family has been a pleasure to work with. Chef Ramsey did definitely save our lives. you got to be kidding me. If he didn't come here, Six months from now, we've probably been closed. I'm grateful, my family's grateful, and I hope this is a new beginning for all of us. Wow, amazing. I've seen many a dream turn into a nightmare. Tonight, a nightmare turned into a beautiful dream. <laughs> <laughs>